if you know Jimmy Street <laughs> at all, <laughs> you know where I'm going to start with Mr. Al Perez. So, Al, when I'm growing up, I'm a big time, you know, wrestling fan. Of course, that's why we're doing this right now. Partially is because of I met Wolfie D and we got a podcast. So uh, when I was a kid, I loved world class, but I'm a mid-Atlantic kid, right? So I grew up mm-hmm. in, in the Virginia area, North Carolina. And man, I, I when I saw you and, and honestly, my personal favorite manager of all time, Gary Hart, on TV, I just thought you guys made such a great combo. So I guess if you don't mind, can we talk a little bit about Gary right now? Would you be okay with that? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, okay. yeah. So uh, what was Ask. he like? What what kind of role did he play in your career? He was the one that started me off. I was I was a he, I was a baby face mm-hmm. at, in Texas in uh, Puerto Rico. Yeah. Okay, I started off as a, most people start off as a baby face, and I started off as a baby face, and I went to uh, Africa. Okay, and that's where I turned heel. That's when the light came on. And I turned heel. I met Gary in Puerto Rico, still as a baby face. And he asked me if I wanted to come to a world class and work for him. I was like, sure, no problem. Cause I was looking for a territory cause I was already burned out of Puerto Rico. Yeah. And the first, when I got to the match, the first day I showed up, he and Bruiser Brody called me into the room and said, uh, Al, he said, uh, uh, I'm the booker. I said, okay, which I knew. And he says, I'd like to be your manager. And I would like for you to be my champion. Is that okay with you? I was like, yeah, you know. <laughs> and Brody said, well, you know, good to have you here. Let's, you know, let's work it. So we did. And Gary's the one that came up with the Latin heartthrob. Okay, okay. Now, I had already turned heel, and that's what I wanted, because Gary was a heel manager. Right, right. And I mean, it, it, everything, everything fell in place when it got with Gary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause he, he had his heat and he would let me do whatever I wanted to do in the ring with no interference. Yeah. Just Gary's presence alone was enough to have heat. <laughs> yeah. he, he was that way. Right. And if I got into a pickle, you know, if I get into a pickle with somebody on me, Gary would just hit the mat. Yeah. And when someone hits the mat, the first the natural instinct is to look. You know? Right, right. And whoever I was working with, Gary would hit the mat, he would turn his head and look. That was my opportunity. Yeah. yeah. And then people realized what he was doing, but that's how that's how he got over just just hitting the mat. Man, that's subtle, but I love that. Oh my God, that's amazing. Oh yeah. Uh, oh and yeah, if you think about it. <clears throat> Naturally, if you're doing something and you hear a boom, right? You look, yeah, and just yeah. that split second is opportunity. Yeah, you know? I love that. You know? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, Gary was. I'm going to say, and there's been a lot of managers, but to me, Gary was one of the best. Amen. He did the least and one of the best. Yeah, but Gary's the one that got me started with the lad's heart throb. Okay. Okay. Let me ask you, did he always really carry the razor blade in his pocket? Was it always in there? Oh, you heard about that, huh? Oh, you know it. <laughs> yeah. <he laughs> Read the book, he join did. the fan club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. He, uh, well, <laughs> I forgot the, again, I forgot the guy's name, but we're, uh, he was Mongolian something. I forgot where he was. Mm. Anyway, uh, we were in Dallas and I, I walked off. I was doing something else and, I hear commotion. I turn around, and this guy, this Mongolian guy, is he sliced me? He sliced me! I mean, Gary cut him in the face. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Gary was fast. He was yeah. fast with that razor blade. Yeah, and, man. You know, apparently, man. the guy smacked Gary from behind. Okay. And when Gary turned around, he came out with that blade. Yeah. <laughs> well, wow. Man. Manager. <laughs> Yeah. So, so let me ask you this, since you just explained it so perfectly, I would love to know, like, what would you say his normal average, what would you just say, like Gary Hart's normal temperament was like? You never saw Gary get upset. Okay. Okay. You couldn't, you couldn't tell, you couldn't tell if he was upset because not even two minutes after he sliced this guy, he came walking back up. I said, what, Gary, what happened? He uh, fucking tried to hit me from behind. You know, it's no big deal. I mean, right. she, she shook her off like, 
Okay, next. <laughs> never saw Gary get really upset with anybody like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. And if he was, it was quick, and then that was it. It was, yeah. it was on and off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gary was awesome. What a great manager he was. Oh man, I, yeah. I mean, I did a little bit in the business in Nashville. Like I said, that's how I met Wolfie. But I modeled my entire gimmick after Gary. I, I you know, literally <laughs> as much as I could. You know, Gary Hart. My name's Jimmy Street. I always thought my name first name ends with a Y and ends with a T. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're reaching now. You're reaching. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I'm not reaching. It's, it, 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 I'm, I'm actually. Stretching. <laughs> it's farther than preaching. But anyway, my, my buddy Josephus said one time, he said, Jimmy, you love Gary Hart and your name is Jimmy. Why don't you go by Jimmy Hart? <laughs> and, oh my God. And, and I right said, Jimmy Hart, yeah. <laughs> right. And I said, you know, that's a great idea. And he was like, oh, wait. <laughs> you had to know Josephus. But that was the funniest thing I'd ever heard him say. And, it, you know, so one thing about it, I got his book, right? Okay. And I read his whole book. And I mean, I've read it a couple times, to be honest. But what would you say, like, if you could just say, okay, these are the small things, or this is the big thing, what would you say you learned from him? Cool. Gary was, Gary was always calm. Okay. Gary yeah. was, all, he was always calm. And and he could speak. Give him a mic. He could speak. Yeah, brother. You know. <laughs> yeah, and there was there was nothing that Gary couldn't do. Right. As far as you know, speaking as a manager or anything, he he was to me like I said, he was he was the best one ever. What I liked you about know? his promos was he would involve, even though you were not in an angle with Ric Flair, he mm -hmm. was talking about, you know, I'm going to do this for Ricky Flair, you know, this kind of thing. Because when he would bring those guys into the conversation, it would seem like it included you in their space. Does that make sense? Always. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Always. I love that about him, you know? I always did. Gary never tried to steal the show from anybody, uh, right. any of his guys that he had. But he brought you up, yeah. it felt like. You know what I mean? Like, it was like, yes, okay, Al did. Perez belongs right beside Ric Flair in my mind. You know what I mean? And he did. He tried to set that match up several yeah. times. Oh, man. And when I, when I got to NWA, now, I'd never been beaten on TV. Now, I did my job with Nikita Koloff and I, a few angles that I had matches with and stuff. Which is no big deal. That was my job. But at the time when I was there, uh, Ric Flair and Dusty were having their battle because Dusty was a booker and Dusty won the war title one more time and Rick won it one more time. And, well, I want to be number 13. I want to be the 13 war champion. You know, <laughs> and this feud was going back and forth. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm going to contribute that to a lot of my ending of my career because it seemed like every place I went, there was confusion with someone else. Yeah. Gotcha. Does that make sense? It oh, does. Because, yeah. he, because right after when Ted Turner bought it from uh, Crockett, they wanted, uh, Flair wanted to be world champ. Dusty was, then they brought another, uh, another book. And I think it was Ken Mantel. I'm not sure. I can't remember who it was. And they brought him into w, uh, NWA. And then they brought uh, Jimmy Barnett in. Mm -hmm. And Jim Barnett was real good friends with Gary. So it was almost like, I'm not sure who was in charge, but they were getting me away from Gary. Mm -hmm. So they started giving him uh, Abdullah the Butcher, Larry Zabisco, and throwing a few other guys at him, and, and oh, Al, and then it got to where Gary didn't have time for me anymore. Because mm. he was going out with Abdullah, he was watching, the, he was doing the tag match, with, and they, they teamed me up with Larry a few times also. But it was like, you know, he was taking care of Gary, was taking care of Gary. Right, right. Okay? Yeah. And I told Gary, I said, Gary, when the new booker came in, I said, I'm going to go give my notice. So I'm going to go talk to him and find out what's going on. Because now Gary was preoccupied with someone else, mostly Abdullah. Abdullah Muta. Alf, Alf. You know. Yeah. Yeah. He used to tell me, Alf. He used to call me Alf. 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 It's okay, <laughs> Alf. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. And then one of the last matches that I had before I went into the office, Gary told me, Al, I can't go out with you. I have to I'm gonna go out with Abdullah. 
Mm-hmm. So I, you know, to me, I, and I, I could have jumped the gun, but I thought I was reading the writing on the wall. Right. Yeah. 